All right. Okay. You good? Yep. All right. It's my privilege to be with you today, and I offer prayers of comfort and peace for you on behalf of our congregation at Lake Harbor United Methodist Church. Edna's love of God and love of neighbor is a model for all of us, and I feel incredibly blessed to have known her and to have learned about faith and hope and love from her over the past six years as her pastor. So I offer us these words. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Edna put on Christ, so in Christ may she be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. I invite us to take comfort from Psalm 121, which speaks of the assurance we can place in God, the assurance that Edna placed in God as well. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. We gather here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life and faith of Edna, beloved wife to Clem for more than 66 years, loving mother to three children, mother-in-law, grandmother to five, great-grandmother to three, sister, dear friend, and a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. We come together in grief because of our loss, but we come to celebrate Edna's life and faith and all she means to us and to so many people. And I want you to know that you have the prayers of lots and lots of people surrounding you today. We trust in those prayers, even as we are not together in one place. May God grant us grace that in pain we might find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, the promise of new life and resurrection. So I want to tell you that there are lots and lots of scriptures that speak to Edna's faith. You could probably pick any one of them and they would apply in some way, shape, or form. But uh, I chose two for today and I hope um, that they're uh, meaningful for you. The first comes from um, Proverbs 31. Uh, this usually is about a noble wife and that's fine. Uh, but for me, Edna is simply a noble woman. And so um, I'm going to read you some of those words from Proverbs 31. A woman of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, and her husband too, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And I thought of Edna. She was both charming and beautiful. Uh, but even more important, she was so faithful in so many ways, and I'm grateful for her. And words from Jesus in the Gospel of John, chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, 
fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. I truly think of Edna as a friend of Jesus, and I'm grateful for her witness. So I invite us into a time of prayer. God, we thank you for your word that gives us life and hope. And I pray for Edna's family in this time, and I pray that the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I just want to offer a short reflection for all of you. Uh, yesterday, as Sherry and I were talking, she reminded me that Edna had written her own obituary in 2008, uh, that Sherry tweaked it a bit, but left it as it was. And so there's, uh, when I read it, of course, I think for anybody who reads that and knows Edna, there's, there's a lot more to say about her. Um, so I just offer these reflections uh, from me and from, uh, from others that ha I've talked to in the past couple of days. As a pastor, I get to know a lot of people, and many of them hold a special place in my heart. Edna is certainly one of those. Um, I always tell people that it was always more of a blessing, I'm sure, for me to go visit her. I hope it was a blessing to her, but I always left her thinking, I'm sure that was more for me than it was for her. Uh, to know her is to absolutely love her. To say her name is to bring a smile to everyone's face. And to remember her is to give thanks for her faithfulness and especially her loving spirit and her trust in God. I can only imagine what it means to you to remember her as a mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and a dear friend. She is truly special and cherished by you and by lots and lots of people who are thinking of you today. One thing about Edna is that she had incredible style. One friend at church called her a true lady. But she did all that with a deep sense of humility and grace. There was no pretense with her, but a true sense of care for other people. And as I said, I always left from visiting her thoroughly convinced that it had been more of a blessing to me than to her, though I know how much she appreciated it and she would always tell me so. She taught me a lot about the ministry of prayer. And I can assure you, though you probably already know it, that she prayed fervently for you, her family, along with her friends, her church family, and our world. She always, always, always asked me about my family, my husband, and my children when I went to see her, and she told me that she prayed for them, and it meant the world to me. She took the ministry of prayer very seriously. She appreciated its power in her life to be connected to God and to others, and that was an incredible witness to me. Edna taught me about living life well. I see a lot of people as a pastor. Uh, I met her in her mid-90s, six years ago, and I was amazed at her passion and her zest for life. Sherry told me that Edna was still skiing in her 70s, bowling in her 80s, and she learned how to play euchre at 95. I think that's amazing. Uh, just in January when she was in the hospital, I remember going to visit and she said, okay, well, it's time to get up. And she got up and walked the entire length of the hallway and back to her room, and the aide that was walking with her said, I wish that everybody who was even 50 years younger than her had this kind of um, impetus and, and desire to, to be well. Um, it was incredible to watch her witness wherever she was, and she did it all the time. She taught me about living faithfully, too. She was honest about the pain of loss that she experienced in 101 years. There were multiple losses a family, uh, and I was here when Jackie passed away, and that was a, a difficult loss, and it was powerful to hear her talk about that grief. She was honest about forgiveness and the need for offering it to others by God's grace and receiving it as well. She was committed to loving God and loving neighbor in whatever way she could, wherever she was, and she did it uh, when she was able to serve others uh, in Muskegon. She did it in her ministry, I know she had a ministry at Christian Care of uh, just simply being who she was and being the kind and generous spirit that she was. And her witness lives on when we do the same in whatever way we can where we are. So I'm thankful to God for her and what she means to me. And I know I'm not alone. Her life and her, her faith bear fruit every day through you and all of us who are blessed to know her. So I invite you to pray. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, when we struggle, you are still our God. 
And we pray to you for one another in our need and for all those who mourn with us today. To those who doubt, give your light. To those who are weak, give your strength. To all of us, give your mercy, O God. And to all who sorrow, give your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another and help us to trust you for comfort and for strength. Dear God, all that you have given us is yours. As you gave Edna to us, now we give her back to you. Receive her into the arms of your mercy. Raise her up with all your people. Receive us too and raise us to new life. Help us to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, into your hands we commend your daughter Edna in sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This body we commit to its resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Let us pray. Dear God, you've shared with us the life of Edna for all that she has given to make us what we are and for that of her which lives and grows in each of us for her life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As we offer her back into your arms, comfort us in our loneliness, strengthen us in our weakness, give us courage to face the future unafraid, and help us to live her legacy of love and care for you and others. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to each other, make us faithful to serve one another, and give us that peace and joy which is eternal life. God of love, we thank you for all the blessings in our lives, for the gift of joy in days of health and strength, and for the gift of your presence and your promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for family and for friends, things that Edna treasured so much. We praise you for your church in every place and the strength that it gives us. And above all, we thank you for Jesus Christ, who knew our grief, who died our death and rose for us, and who lives among us still through your Holy Spirit. And as he taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, may we feel God's presence and strength in these days, and may God bless us as we remember and give thanks for Edna. Remember that God walks with us. We do not walk alone. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>